Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Friday the 24th of May. Now, today's talk is concerning and uh, bemusing. It's based around this document here. It runs to about 58 pages. Uh, this is the full document here I've put on the screen. Uh, you can download it. It's now in the public domain, and I'll put the link. And it's from the uh, Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia, which controls their drugs and vaccination policy. Now, the key thing is that this document has only been released as a result of freedom of information requests. Now, it was uh, released after a long time of freedom of information requests. Uh, and even now, it's still quite highly redacted. So if, if we uh, have a look at this here, uh, redacted. Uh, redacted. You know, really it has to be asked, why is there still a lot of material in this document related to the Pfizer vaccine? Why is a lot of this still redacted? Because the whole point of science is that we share it and open it up to peer review. The scientists all around the world desperate to get a hold of this information. But a lot of it's still redacted. But a lot of it isn't. And we're going to be looking at the stuff that isn't. This was, as I say, a freedom of information request. There was one particular lady in Australia who... A lot of work to get this. I do know who she is, and Senator Rennick, who made me uh, aware of this document, knows who she is, but I don't have her permission to disclose her name, so I won't do that at this stage. But bear in mind, all the information we're going to be talking about here was known before Australia authorised the vaccines, January 2021. Now, this is done largely on Pfizer data, uh, but written by the Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia. So given that it comes from Pfizer, this is international information. I think we can be certain that this information was on Anthony Fauci's desk or equivalent information. I think we can be confident it was on Chris Whitty's desk and uh, our scientific officer's desk, Patrick Balance's desk. Um, I think this information w was, was completely known. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get straight on to it. The first thing I want to look at is, is the distribution of the, uh, the lipid nanoparticles. We were told it stayed in the injection site. I can now tell you on YouTube, because this is an official government document, I'm now free to discuss this. As far as what's in that document, I can, I can discuss. Because we can discuss official, official government documents. Uh, that uh, the lipid nanoparticles are widely distributed, very widely distributed. Um, this is from page 44 of the document. Now, there was no need to take any of this, uh, my word for any of this, check it out for yourself. It's a complicated document, but it's written in English. If you spend a bit of time, you can work it out. Rats give an intramuscular injection. Now, bear in mind, this is intramuscular injection, not intravenous injection, intramuscular injection. The concentration of, lipid, uh, of radioactive lipid nanoparticles reached peak level in the plasma, <laughs> that's in the blood, of course, 8.9 micrograms lipid equivalent per mil. That sounds high to me. Now, um, do not be alarmed. The, the vaccines are not radioactive. But what they do is to analyse the distribution, that they, they uh, put a radioactive label onto the, uh, the lipid nanoparticles, which can be done quite readily in experimental situations. And then rather than go and count the individual nanoparticles through an electron microscope, they can just see how much radio radiation is there. It's a standard technique. So uh, the vaccines are not radioactive. Don't get the wrong idea. Um, but there's plenty of things that are pretty concerning. Um, so there we go. Um, it reached these high levels in the plasma. When we were told it wasn't systemically distributed, we can now say definitively from a government document it is systemically distributed uh, between one and four hours after the dose so it was floating all around the body because of course the plasma the liquid part of the blood it goes to your big toe it goes to your little toe it goes to your little finger it goes to your thumb it goes to your ear it goes to your brain it goes to your liver it goes to your kidneys it goes absolutely everywhere apart from the clear part in the front of your eyes all the all the other living tissues the plasma goes there um, this, go, this, is, this is widely distributed, as we'll see, uh, and distributed mainly into the liver. So the liver was high concentrations, relatively high concentrations, adrenal glands, spleen and ovaries. 
over 48 hours. Now, of course, the ovaries store and uh, mature the ovum. So um, I'm not going to pretend I'm not a little concerned about this. I am more than a little concerned, actually. Um, and we can now say this from government data. Um, quite what this means, of course, we don't yet fully understand. Let's hope we don't ever fully understand, because uh, let's hope it goes away, but I suspect it might not. Concentrations were higher in the plasma than in the blood, so it, when they isolated the plasma, the liquid part of the blood from the cells and everything, um, there was still a lot of uh, concentration in the plasma itself. And uh, the plasma, of course, is, as we said, goes all around the body. It's what the red cells and the white cells float in. More distribution data all around the body. Uh, this is from page 40 of the report. Do check it out. Distribution of lipid nanoparticles um, or expressed spike protein was not studied. So they actually didn't study um, the, the expression of spike protein. It was just the radioactive markers for the lipid nanoparticles that they studied. Um, you would have thought uh, you would have thought that they would study the amount of spike protein the mRNA would make, but the document is clearly saying that was not studied. My question is, why not? This is table four two, which I'm going to show you. And again, radioactive concentration as a proxy for lipid nanoparticle distribution after intramuscular injection. This is assuming it's done properly into a muscle. Mean total radioactivity was greatest at the injection site. Fair enough. That's good. That's good. That's where we want it. But it was followed by the liver. With much lower concentrations in the spleen, adrenal glands and ovaries. But still concentration there. But higher concentration in the liver. Tissue distribution pattern was similar in 100 microgram doses to 50 microgram doses. In other words, the smaller dose gave a similar tissue distribution of lipid nanoparticles again concerning even the smaller dose the distribution was similar uh, why isn't wasn't it done on smaller doses uh, again we don't know highest distribution into the liver adrenal glands and spleen as we said now the conclusion they drew here slow but significant distribution of lipid nanoparticles from the site of injection with major uptake to the liver i don't like the sound of major uptake to the liver at all it means this, these lipid nanoparticles were circulating around the liver in relatively high concentration. That means that the lipid nanoparticles would fuse with the walls of the hepatocytes and the hepatic capillaries. And in fact, in the liver, the blood comes into direct contact with the liver cells. It's one of the few places in the body where there's uh, what we call fenestrated capillaries with gaps in the, in the capillaries. Uh, that means that the uh, mRNA could go into the um, endothelial, vascular endothelial cells and deliver into the hepatocytes themselves, produce the spike protein, that would be expressed and there would be uh, an inflammatory reaction against that spike protein in the liver. Um, this is not what we were told. How, how could the Australian authorities know this in January 2021? and still approve this uh, vaccine is is a question for the Australian authorities. And as we say, the equivalent data was available in the United States, the United Kingdom, everywhere. Um, this is um, worse than I had hoped to report, to be quite honest. Um, mean plasma ratios. This is just saying that there was more lipid nanoparticles uh, in the plasma than in the blood. So it was circulating in the plasma rather than in the blood, uh, rather than related to the red blood cells. Now I have a table here with all the organs where this was distributed. Um, it is here, and I'm going to I've blown it I've blown it up a bit for you so you can uh, so you can see this. Um, pretty alarming. Um, it, it's basically going to a lot of organs. So these are the list of organs where there was data uh, for distribution. Adipose tissue is fat. The lipid nanoparticles went there, unfortunately. Adrenal glands, bladder, bone, the femur they checked, bone marrow. Um, bone marrow is, um, is 
I find it particularly uncomfortable that the uh, lipid nanoparticles went to the bone marrow because that's where all the blood cells are are produced. Um, not speculating on what that could cause, but they went there. Therefore, the RNA that they contained went there as well. This is, this is the point here. Um, went to, particles went to the brain, the eyes, the heart, at the injection site, of course. Um, and we do notice it was high concentrations at the injection site, but the point is it was systemically observed, uh, uh, distributed as well. Kidneys, large intestine, liver, lungs, lymph nodes, mandibular, uh, that's under the jaw, mesenteric, that's so associated with the gut, muscle, ovaries, pancreas. It went to all of these organs. Uh, pituitary gland, the master of the endocrine orchestra, relatively high concentrations in the pituitary gland. Uh, prostate gland in men, lower concentrations, salivary gland, skin, small intestine, Spinal cord, spleen, stomach, testes, concerning. Um, thymus gland behind the sternum, thyroid gland in the neck, uterus, whole blood, plasma, and that gives the ratio. So we do see that these concentrations are in all of these organs. Now this table here gives, um, if you want to see it, it it's... Um, could do a screenshot of that if you wanted to but it's all i've given you the reference for it they're all the full concentrations of the uh, distribution of the lipid nanoparticle radioactivity um, after particular periods of time so let's just give one example here the liver um there's the data there so at 25 minutes it was 0.74 now this the units here are micrograms of lipid equivalent per gram or in the case of the blood presumably per mil so uh way higher than i would have anticipated 25 minutes it was 0.74 one hour 4.6 two hours it's still going up four hours it's still going up eight hours it's still going up uh 24 hours it looks like it's gone down a bit 19.24 but at 48 hours still 24 uh, 0.29 so it looks like it's kind of stabilized there in the 8 to 24 hour period um, so the obvious question is why did they only go up to 48 hours why didn't they keep testing until the concentrations went down so what we can say is the substantial numbers of lipid nanoparticles with the messenger rna coding for the spike protein in the liver at 48 hours what about three days? What about four days? Didn't seem to be done. And bear in mind, all this was known before the vaccines were approved. Before, all this was known before the vaccines were approved. Struggling for words. Now, metabolism. Um, how much is broken down this is from page 46 um, in vitro in life studies indicated minor metabolism now these are the uh, the, the lipids the experimental lipids that we used um, in the in the liver with most of the lipid found unchanged at the end of uh, two to four hour incubation period so in very short time so what, what they found was in the liver that not only did the lipid nanoparticles uh, persist in quite large amounts for up to 48 hours, at least 48 hours. As well as that, the, the fats themselves were not sufficient, not significantly denatured at uh, four hours, two to four hours. So the fat was still uh, in the original, uh, more or less in the original format. And the lipid nanoparticles still there in high concentrations after um, after uh, 48 hours when testing cease. So there we go. We can say definitively from a government document that the lipid nanoparticles and therefore the messenger RNA that is contained is distributed to all of these organs. Um, we were told it wasn't, but now we know it was. So what someone needs to do now, really, I haven't had time to do this today, but um, look back to people in authority who said this wasn't systemically distributed. 
And given that this report um, is from the TGA on January 2021, anyone who said that after January 2021, uh, well, the best thing we can say is they were poorly informed, isn't it? But if they're in authority, they shouldn't have been poorly informed. I put this question to Senator Rennick yesterday in our interview, which I hope he got a chance to see. I said, really, you'd expect the TGA to go the extra mile to work out this is safe because they were going to give this vaccine to everyone in Australia, pretty well everyone in Australia. They should have gone the extra mile, I said. And he said, no, it's not a matter of going the extra mile. This was their job. This is what they should have done anyway. And of course, that applies to CDC, FDA, this is a healthcare products regulatory authority, every, everyone. So it looks like all of these authorities are approved these vaccines. And of course, at this time, January 21, we'd, we'd already started the vaccination program in the UK. And yet, if Australia's anything to go by, this information was on people's desks. Meaning, in my view, um, there's questions to answer. I don't expect they ever will be. This won't get to mainstream media, of course. Um, but it's a government document, therefore I am allowed to talk about it. I'd much rather not, but... Uh, I'm not going to speculate on what this means, because I, I don't know if I'm going beyond my remit uh, saying that, but we can say that this is definitely the systemic distribution. Okay. Um, we will... Leave it there. I said concerning, obvious reasons. Amusing, um, given that this was known, why were the vaccines given authorization when they were? Thank you for watching.